say if it is an upper limit problem how do i overcome that yes that's a great question well the first thing we need to do is look underneath the upper limit problem for what the specific fear is that triggers it and in the big leap i lay out you know three or four of the big ones like the big one is that fear of that I'm fundamentally flawed and therefore I don't deserve good things. So when good things start to happen, I punish myself or don't let myself experience them. It's really important to look at a second fear, which is the fear of not letting the light shine on me. In other words, that I don't deserve to have the light shine on me. I don't deserve to be fully appreciated. And a lot of times, interestingly enough, those folks grow up in families where there was maybe an older boy who was the golden boy or an older girl who was the golden girl and and they weren't it. They were kind of number two or number three down the down the line. And so that gives them that that I don't deserve to have the light shine on me fully. Um, and so that fear keeps a lot of people pulled back from expressing their full potential in life because they basically don't feel like they're entitled to it. A third fear is the fear of being disloyal to people in your past. Usually it's your family of origin, but it could be other people. But what I mean by that is I work with a woman who's a very powerful executive, but she has a kind of a dependent relationship with her husband of many years. And so, you know, she'll be head of the boardroom at work, but then come home and allow him to pick on her, you know? And so she doesn't occupy the fullness of herself in her marriage as she does in the boardroom. And as we were working on that and trying to figure out why that is, she came up with that whole disloyalty thing that if she stands up and takes her full ownership of her marriage and doesn't let her husband boss her around, her mother and father had this incredibly dependent marriage. And so she felt honor bound to have that same kind of relationship in her own life. Now, this was totally unconscious to her up until we talked about it. She didn't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I think I'm going to be in a submissive relationship. It was just what she felt compelled to do. But once she broke out of that trance and realized, well, wait a minute, if my husband really loves me, he'll love me as much or more if I take up my full measure. And it's been so beautiful to watch her, you know, get out of that kind of one up, one down kind of relationship where he's the controller and she's doesn't get to be the boss. And so to watch them come out of that and still have a great relationship is one of the great joys that I get to experience in my life. Well, you probably do, too, because you get to see people going through transformations all the time yourselves.